y'all. It is summer, which means it's bonfire season, which is awesome. First of all, I just have to praise the Lord that we have rain because a couple of months ago where I live was super dry and there would have been no bonfires at all. I was thinking about making this video and I was like, what's the point? But it has rained and it has rained a lot. So praise the Lord for that. We in this video are going to be making a s'mores bar or a s'mores board or a smorgasbord. No, not really. Um, so I'm going to make marshmallows from scratch. They're not that difficult and they really are nice and soft and fluffy and yummy. They are worth it. I told my dad that I was making marshmallows from scratch. He's like, you know, you can just buy those for a dollar at the grocery store. You guys, these are not grocery store marshmallows. Okay. So stick with me here. And then the s'mores bar, I'm just going to show you what I did. I'm going to give you some options for things you can do. This is a really quick dessert, um, whether it's just for a backyard thing or uh, maybe an event. Um, having a lot of different options is super fun. So without further ado, let's get into it. You're going to start by taking some cold water and adding it to your mixing bowl. You're going to add some gelatin. You're actually going to add quite a bit of it. When you open this stuff up, it is not going to smell that great. By the way, the recipe will be linked down below. This is not my own recipe, but actually Alton Brown's recipe. You're gonna set the gelatin aside to bloom, which just means it absorbs the water. And then in a saucepan, you're gonna add more cold water, sugar, and then you're also going to add um, light corn syrup. You're going to put this um, on heat and you're going to want to bring it to temperature. We are looking for a temperature of about 240 degrees. Um, you'll want to have it um, at a medium high heat and just remember that it takes time to bring it to heat. Um, the times are listed in the recipes that it could take. Um, you just want to pay attention to it. Um, and I did have a thermometer. If you didn't have one, um, you could try um, using some of the tests. Um, I don't know any of those but you can look that up online like softball test and all of that um and i just kept testing it until it got to 240 degrees and then you're slowly going to stream this in to the gelatin and the water mixture you want it to hit the side of the bowl and you want to go really slowly then once you have it all incorporated you're going to turn up the speed and you're going to keep whipping it and you're going to keep whipping it and you're going to keep whipping it and that's you really do need a stand mixer for this um, this is going to take up to 15 minutes. Oh yeah. Add the vanilla while it's whipping. Um, we can prepare a pan. So I didn't show this, but I took Pam and I sprayed this pan really well. And then there's a sugar and cornstarch mixture. It's just a quarter cup cornstarch, quarter cup, quarter cup powdered sugar. And we're going to put about a third of that into the pan and we're just going to move it around. And basically it's sticking to the pan and it's creating a barrier between the pan and the marshmallows. Because as you can imagine, this stuff is freakishly sticky. Set aside the excess, we'll use it later. You're gonna keep whipping and whipping and you're gonna feel the sides of the bowl. When this comes to um, room temperature, then you can stop and pour it into the pan. Again, this is gonna take up to 15 minutes, so you can kind of walk away for you know a little bit before you get too concerned about this. And you're just touching the side of the bowl. When it's room temperature, you're ready to go. So you're definitely gonna want to grease your spatula and um, use that to scrape the marshmallow out of the bowl Pour it into the pan and you're just going to get it nice and smoothed out. As you can see, this recipe might feel intimidating, but it really comes together quickly. Um, as long as you have a sand mixer, I really wouldn't recommend it if you don't have a sand mixer. Um, but if you do, it's just a matter of putting the right ingredients together and it's going to produce a super fluffy and yummy marshmallow unlike anything you've had before. Also, I want to make a note about the vanilla. I did increase the amount of vanilla. Um, in the recipe, it calls for a teaspoon of vanilla. I put in a tablespoon. I think you can even add just a touch more. Um, that gelatin has a strong flavor and you don't really want to taste it, so you do want a lot of vanilla. I then just added some more of that powdered sugar cornstarch mixture and I didn't use it all. I'm still saving most of it for the end because we'll want to coat the marshmallows. So you're supposed to wait overnight, but I was in a hurry. So I waited about four hours and it was actually pretty ready to go. So I kind of tried to dump it out, but it wouldn't come. So I pried it up and then plop, it came out. So you can see it's kind of like a marshmallow brick. And from here, I was going to cut it into pieces. So I took my bench scraper. Oh, first of all, sprinkled it with some of that mixture and you do kind of want to work with that as you're going any sticky sides that you see you're just going to keep putting that powdered sugar cornstarch mixture on there 
And then I took a bench scraper, which I didn't spray with Pam, which was really dumb. But anyway, I started cutting it into squares. I wanted it to be about graham cracker size squares. And here you can see I put some powdered sugar on the blade. I would really recommend putting Pam. But anyway, then once you have it all cut, you're going to take all those sticky cut sides and you're going to dip it in that powdered sugar cornstarch. And then you kind of want to beat it off until it's just kind of coated but not drenched. Then it's just putting the s'mores bar together. So I started with graham crackers and I just break these in half. I want them to be ready to go so that when someone walks up to the s'mores bar, it is completely ready. They don't have to wait. All right, once I have the graham crackers, I'm going to pull in some of these striped cookies. I think these work super great for s'mores because they have the chocolate built in. You could use all sorts of things. You could use Chips Ahoy. You could use Oreo. You could use homemade cookies. Um, you could use so many options. If you have other ideas, list them below in the comments. That'll be really interesting to hear and maybe you already use something that's kind of creative. And then I'm using these mini Hershey bars. I just, again, like everything to be um, ready to go. You could break bigger Hershey's into, bar into pieces. And then I decided to add a little bit of some fancy chocolate here with some Ghirardelli. Obviously, sky's the limit. Again, you could go to the candy aisle and look for individually wrapped chocolates that sound good to you. It'd be awesome to get some peanut butter in there. I love using these Reese's. Um, if you've never had a Reese's s'more and you like peanut butter, these are awesome. So you really do need to try them. And again, sky's the limit. This is just what I did. And then I wanted some spreads on my board. So I'm using peanut butter and I'm using Nutella. And I actually took the wrappers off just to give it a cleaner look and added knives to those. Last thing I did was add on my marshmallows. You guys, this is the end of the s'mores board. It's super quick, super easy, but those homemade marshmallows make it special. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe and I'll be pushing out more videos about fun summer food activities. And the next one, I'm always excited about my next video. So the next video is going to be a dessert charcuterie board 101.